What's poppin' everyone? Welcome to Popcorn Culture. I am your host, Ben Carlin, and this is my brother, Jay, who will be in every episode. Co-host, Ben. Co-host. We'll see about that. Yeah. Anyway, Jay, what's going on today, we'll man? See. Oh, man, today is good. It's it's still Christmas. It's still Christmas. Yeah. Three episodes in, and it is still Christmas Day. It's unbelievable. Probably. Merry unless, Christmas, everyone. Unless it is, in fact, June 7th, and you've just found the pop, and you're, you're giving it a good listen. Actually, be sure to, if it's June 7th and you're listening to this, tweet me. Let me know. Yeah, if it is specifically June 7th and we called that out of the blue, I think tweet Ben, 100%, SCB underscore Ben, and probably leave a five-star review. I'm just saying. I hey, don't know. it's helpful. It's, it's helpful. helpful. Yeah. Five-star review because June 7th. Because June 7th. There you go, guys. It's like popcorn day or something. Something like that. There maybe. must be a popcorn day. Surely there is. There's gotta be. How do you feel about all the weird little holidays that happen to exist every day of the year? Some of them are fun, and some of them, I feel like, are completely stupid. I don't, you know, mostly I just don't like them. I feel like almost the entire function of any of them that performs well is the opportunity for people to post a themed Instagram photo, which typically then like gives you the impetus to go make the decision to take the photo or otherwise find a photo that was maybe not as appropriate to post before, but it's like, hey, it's National Sibling Day. So where's my favorite photo where I look really good and my sibling looks ridiculous? Oh, I know. I feel like it's just a sell. It's not really because the thing about these little holidays is that they are not real holidays. They are just excuses to post on social media. And more often than not, I feel like they are made up by some business to sell their product. Like National Pancake Day, like you know who's behind that. It's Big Pancake. <laughs> Waffle House. It is Waffle House and Aunt Jemima and IHOP. <laughs> they are loving International Pancake Day and they want you to celebrate it because you're going to buy their stuff. Do you think Big Big Pancake is a real industry? Is Big like, Pancake a real industry? I mean, yeah. No, no, is hey. it? Is it? Oh, yeah. Look, if you, w when you go out and you want a pancake breakfast, do you want a local pancake or do you want an IHOP pancake? So, which would be big pancake? That would be big pancake. Well, I would go local pancake right, yeah. whenever given the option. Although, I would also always go waffle whenever given the option. Well, okay. Don't even get me started about big waffle. Oh, no. <laughs> Who is big waffle? Because I would go to the waffle house. Actually, you know, waffle, I don't know. Is there anything, is there any such thing as little waffle? Little Eggos? No. Eggos are not. Eggos are big waffle. Eggos are big waffle. Eggos are big waffle, okay. even though they are small waffle. Right, right, right. Now, right. now speaking of big business. Big business? Big business. Ben, I have some, I have some beef. And not beef, I have some chicken to, to hammer out here. To, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. I have, I truly have no idea where this is going. Um, well, you're gonna. Okay. And big it affects, chicken? It affects you. <sighs> big chicken. I got, I have beef with big chicken. Oh no. You'll see. Okay, so on me. I've been, it's been really fun coming onto the pop and talking to you and starting are, the are podcast. Are you breaking up with me? No, 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 no. Where's the butt? <laughs> The, I, we don't have like a, a good place for everyone to talk yet. And because we've done three episodes and haven't released them all, there hasn't been a way, like even uh, a lot of discussion. Sure, right, sure. About anything yet. I'm sure tons of people are going to have lots of opinions about Big Pancake and Big Waffle. For sure. For sure. But I've had Who would to... win in a fight, by the way? Big Pancake or Big Waffle? Big Waffle. Ooh. Way sturdier. Way sturdier. Yeah. yeah. Got waffle those... don't rip. Got those crispy edges. <laughs> He's got those crispy... Okay. Pancake don't have crispy edges. Right, He's got right. no defenses. Yeah, exactly. Or offense. Or nothing on offense, either. What we really need is, like, a World of Warcraft kind of game where you can get, like, all the accessories and, yeah. like, armor and stuff like that, but the characters themselves are waffles and pancakes. Right, and everything's, like, forks and spoons and yes. syrups and Yes. Oh, yeah. Like the, okay, so instead butters. of potions, you have syrups. Yeah. Absolutely. The weapons are forks and knives. Here we go. Welcome to our uh, massive multiplayer online role-playing game, Big Pancake. Big Pancake. <laughs> oh, so does that mean Big Pancake is the hero or the villain? No, it's the villain. It's like Diablo. Oh, I see. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wait, you weren't rooting for Diablo? No, I'm not rooting for Diablo. <laughs> yeah, me either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's rooting for Diablo. No, Diablo me... 4 coming out. Anyway, the point I was trying to get to was that... After after just releasing the pilot episode, it's been tricky to hunt down where the discussion is happening. Sure, We've sure. got our Discord. Yep. That's probably the best place to do it. But there's been some on Twitter. Yep. 
There's been some on the Instagram. We have the Facebook page, but it's not really well known yet. You should go check out the Facebook page. I think we're setting up a Reddit. We've been working on that. We do have a YouTube channel. Yeah, we have a YouTube a channel. So we need a central location Please subscribe. for the discussion to happen. We do. We need we a do. place. And I don't know if that'll if that'll be the Reddit or the Facebook or just in the Discord or whatever. But the Discord isn't a free thing. It's uh, through the Patreon. It is through the so Patreon, through Supercarly. There's Mothers, a yes. little bit of a barrier to entry. So I'm sure that'll sort itself out and we will have a, a natural spot to discuss things. But in the meantime, I've had to try and hunt down the discussion. Is the so, discussion a chicken? The discussion is not a chicken, but okay. I went into Twitter and I was just using hashtag popcorn culture. Oh. Because I figured this might be a way for people. This might people might be tweeting about it with hashtag popcorn culture. Sure, I mean people are definitely tweeting about it with people hashtag popcorn about culture. And do you know what, Ben? I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. I expected maybe some people would use popcorn culture. Sure. As a phrase. We're definitely not the first people to ever use this name. No, we're not. No, we're not. But I can tell you that we are going to take over that hashtag. Because guess who's in control of it, Ben? Tell me all about it. Big, Big Bird. Chicken. <gasps> Big Chicken. It is, no. it is none other than Kentucky Fried Chicken. Has the ha has, as part of one of their marketing campaigns for their popcorn chicken is popcorn culture. You are kidding I me. I am not kidding you. There is nothing less cultured to me than Kentucky <laughs> Fried Chicken. KFC. All I'm saying is, as far as I'm concerned, we are now at war with Kentucky Fried Chicken. Oh. And I won't be buying their, any of their products, and I won't be eating any of their chicken, and, uh, and until we take back the hashtag. Oh my so gosh. So this is my challenge to all of our listeners out there, the, the little kernels, is that we're taking down Big Kernel. Oh, you know, oh my pop, gosh, you know? that worked so well. Little Colonel's Big Colonel, <laughs> little, because, little Colonel's. because Colonel... Yeah, Sa Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders, Colonel I was Sanders. like, was that a Civil War general? <laughs> Oh, no, man. Colonel Sanders, KFC, I'm... you're going down. We're taking back the hashtag. Everyone needs to make sure this is because they can't they can't control this. They can't. No, like, it's out of their control. Popcorn culture is our thing, and the little colonels, I'm sure, listening are going to do their part to take back the hashtag from KFC. Who's just using it poorly? Oh yeah, like, for sure. They're trying to promote popcorn chicken. Like, hey, we got popcorn corn. Right. 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 Yeah, you don't want cultures, cultures, plural, near your chicken. Like that you just that, that feels like salmonella. That's out, yeah, you don't want popcorn culture. You, <laughs> right, don't, exactly. you don't want popcorn chicken with cultures. With cultures, exactly. <laughs> it's a pro it's a it's a huge problem. I that don't know what they were problem. thinking yeah. when they came up with that plan. So everyone go let KFC know that popcorn culture is taking back the taking back the hashtag hashtag popcorn culture on Twitter. Do we have do we we have a Twitter account going? I believe I believe culture? we do. It's called the Popcast. The Popcast. The Popcast. At I can, the Popcast. At the Popcast. Okay. Pop in all caps. <laughs> You'll find it even if you don't put it in all caps. Oh, no, I know. But, but T-H-E-P-O-P -P cast. I believe so. The pop cast. Let's hope I'm right. I hope you're right. I'm, I have been doing this thing lately where I'm blindly standing to, sticking to my guns. Blind, just like. Just like, like there, there's this thing. I, I am definitely one of these people who typically like can't make a decision until the gut moment comes into effect. Like yeah. where, where I have to make a decision and the best thing I can do is use all the information I have at my disposal. Mm -hmm. And so typically that's not like this force that's pressing down upon me. I just have enough time to make sure that I'm 100% right. So you're just, you're just going with confidence and hoping no one checks you is what it sounds like. I'm go no, not, not that I'm hoping nobody checks me. I'm just hoping I'm right. You're just hoping you're right. Because surely sometimes I am, maybe not always, but, but I'm, I'm lowering my bar as to how confirmed I have to be before I'm going to just adamantly stand behind what I've said. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I won't do this. So you're like everyone else on Twitter is what I'm hearing. Ooh. Oh, Twitter slam. Twitter Dude. slam. Okay, so my two day off Twitterness right now. Uh, we've been I've been off Twitter for like two just two days because Star Wars is coming out yes. tonight. Tonight. And so I haven't wanted to get on there. But I am curious to know if you have ever considered or taken like an intentional social media break. Go. <laughs> have I ever based basically been like, wow, this environment has become so toxic for me that like it is bringing me down. I have recognized that it's happening. Time to delete the app from my phone. Yeah. And, and basically like, you know, just deprive myself for a, a period of time until I feel like I can come back in, in good safety. Yeah. 
Okay, good question. Good question. Um, no is the answer to that question. I don't think that I have ever reached a point where I was so challenged by what was happening on social media that I that I felt like I had to take a pause from it. Um, I do think that the process of going through um, Super Carl and Brothers, like creating the kind of content that we did, especially early on, um, built me up in a way to where I, I sort of take digital opinions and thoughts with like a grain of salt mm -hmm. first. And I think that took time, you know, like in the beginning, if somebody left a rude comment or if somebody was like, oh, I super prefer Jay to you, no offense. It was like, okay, but it still hurts. Um, you know, like, and that's, that's people directly talking about me, not necessarily just the right. things that people are spouting on social media. Um, but I think somewhere along the way, I got better about it to the point where nothing, nothing really, really gets under my skin too bad. Um, and if there is someone that I know, uh, like there are people like in my daily life and I definitely will not name names, but, um, who I have just muted on Twitter, which I think is a phenomenal function because Ooh, the mute button, because I don't have to unfollow them. And so as far as they're concerned, I do still follow them. It's just like, why doesn't Ben ever like any of my tweets? Well, there's a reason. Um, no, it's, I, I think what it comes down to though, is that like sometimes uh, if, if tweets get to the point where, where they are bothering me, it's like, okay, like I can, I can, I can press pause on that particular source, but I have historically always been very um, frugal with my follows right. and my likes and all of that stuff. So I, I feel like I'm not the type of person who is, is a rampant liker of photos. And I definitely am not quick to follow someone. And I also, uh, I prune mine pretty often. Like if, if oh, I'm really? following people that like, I, I just stop enjoying their content, then I regularly unfollow people. Unfollow. Yes. Yeah. I was actually unfriending people on Facebook just this morning. You were! Which I really, let me just say. Therapeutic? I, I mean, not in particular, but the fact that you have to click the word unfriend on Facebook, it's like kind of visceral. It's like, man, this is such an official, like, we're not, it's, it feels like what you're saying is we're not friends anymore. Well, it's a type of thing that if like you did it and the person who you were unfriending saw you do it, like yeah. that would, it would feel a little icky. It would. It, it probably would. So for me, the bar has to be like, I have forgotten who you were or sure. I haven't thought of, like thought about you as a person for any, like, you know, the last five years. Sure. Like, who is this? Like, if I need to, like, double check who you are, that's probably, you're getting unfriended. Sure, Now, that sure. being said, sometimes I will say that, and I will be like, oh, yeah, it's that person from that one time. That is still good enough to stay on. No, so your <laughs> bar's very low. My bar is very low, but I still, pro I mean, the other problem, I got, I got to a point, and the way Facebook works is, if you click on the profile to check it, then when you go back to the list of your whole friends, it brings you back to the top. Okay. And I was like, all right, I was already like in the C's, so I'm not scrolling all the way back. But sure. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't do a full pruning, but we're very busy. I'm okay, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we, we're, we're sitting here having a conversation about but so, how we wasted time. That being said, let me, let me back it up. So it sounds like in terms of the way you monitor your social media use, like you at least have good mental defenses against like the toxicity of Twitter. Yeah. And good practices about it. But my real, but do you feel like, so that's, that's not the reason you would take a break, but do you feel like maybe, like, have you ever wanted to because you find yourself scrolling too much or like, I know like when I wake up personally, I will always just open Instagram and Twitter and just sort of mindlessly scroll. I, I don't, I don't love it, but I don't also want to delete either of them. So I don't know. Do you, how do you handle your, your screen time? Like my over, my overuse yeah. of the platform that, and that is a good question because it is, it is, I do the exact same thing. Like usually the, if you were to start a timer from the amount of like seconds that pass in between me turning my alarm off in the morning and Instagram opening, I would be willing to bet on a six month span of time. It is never in excess of like 30 seconds. Right. Like, it, which is like embarrassing to say out loud. It's just like, I think the first thing that I do is usually like I turn off my phone and I don't know if like the way that I see it in part is sort of like, it helps me wake up. Like I'm already bad about waking up as mm -hmm. it is. So it's sort of like, this is a really easy way to get my mind doing something right, like, immediately. Is it, is it a way to stop you from going back to sleep? Yeah, like I, I think in some capacity, I would say that I'm treating it in that manner. Like it, it would be very, it's not unusual for me to hit the snooze alarm. It would be unusual for me to pick up my phone, open up Instagram, close the app, put my phone down and then fall back asleep. That would um, be unusual. That would be unusual. Mm. That's not something that I would typically do. So but So are you not just trading one vice for another though? Like like is it is it better to be scrolling through Instagram than to fall asleep or are they not like equally non-productive? <laughs> 
to your day? Well, I, I mean, I, I suppose it's a fair question. It's not like I sit there. I, I think the overall impact on my day would largely be minimal. Um, like chances are, if I fell back asleep, I would sleep for longer than I'm ultimately going to scroll. Mm. So part of the fact that I only follow, you know, 135 people or something like that, maybe it's more than that. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm strongly sticking by my random <laughs> guess at how many people I follow. I'm going to um, double check you on that. Thing. Please do it. Uh, but the fact is, is that most of the time I find the little thing that says like, hey, you're totally up to date. You've seen everything new. Right. Um, so it's it's not unusual for me to be able to get to get fully up to date very quickly. So we're talking like two to three minutes of scrolling. Sure. And I'm already there. Um, and so I think for the most part, I will then put my phone down and okay. I'll get out of bed. So I think for me, it's like, it's a reasonably small ritual. I think where I would get more upset with myself is in the evening, if Allie and I are watching a movie and both of us have our phones out and we're not really watching the movie, we're not really interacting with each other. We're just sort of like scrolling, scrolling for yeah. the sake of it. Um, most of the time when we catch ourselves doing that, we will do like a phone stack and we'll basically put like our bo both of our phones on like the mantle underneath the TV and like we'll both like fully commit to watching the movie. Um, um, That's a good strategy. Yeah, and that, that works well because there's also sort of like the interdependence on it. So like if you're the first person to pick up the phone stack, then like you're guilty. Right, like you're, you're like you're inadvert you're sort of holding each other accountable because you don't want to be the one to break the phone stack. Exactly, mm. exactly. So that, that works pretty well. And and I don't really, I, I don't find typically that I'm a, a huge victim to it. Um, I will say the one thing that does get me is the Instagram ads. Like I, I own so many things things that are Instagram Instagram ads. It is amazing to me how eye-catching they are. Like, I don't know what formula they are, but so often I'll be scrolling and maybe it's just because they're not someone I'm following. Yeah. And like my list of people I'm following has a certain like feel and familiarity to it. And all of a sudden there's this like glaringly different thing that catches my eye. And I'm like, what is this? And then it's always an ad and I'm like, Ugh. It's like, those are, those are some really gorgeous leather boots. Who bought those? Was it my friend Brandon? No, it wasn't. It's Thursday Boot Company. Ugh, jeez. Ugh. Ugh. That's yeah. Not sponsored, by the way. Not sponsored. Yeah. Thursday uh, boot. Is that a real boot company? That is a real boot company. <laughs> it is, in fact. Actually, that was one of those moments where uh, Scott in our office one day, I walked in and he was standing in his office in this big room, staring down at his feet. And I was like, those Thursday boots? And I was taking a shot in the dark. And he was like, they are. And I was like, whoa, how about it? <laughs> Instagram ads? Yeah, 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 they got him too. They got, they got him, him too. too. They got yeah. him too. Curse you, big leather boot. Am I telling you? <laughs> I, I really, I truly, I think Thursday is still small leather boot. Okay, they're small leather. <laughs> yeah, they're small leather. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, but that's okay. the thing. That's the thing is that these ads are so effective that these smaller industries can just you know they can permeate. They can get to you. Yeah. So back to the social media, I will say the only step I've ever taken in this direction has been that I have delete. I deleted Facebook from my phone over a year ago. Okay. I still have a Facebook account. I still check it on my like desktop, but it has been off of my phone for over a year. And I would say it was one of those things like, I, had, I was like, I'm just, I'll just experiment with this. Cause that's one of those things you feel like when you're deleting it, it's like, this is it. This is it. Right. When like real, you can just re-download it. Sure. No sure, problem. Yeah. Not going anywhere. Yeah. But I did that. And I would say maybe once a month, do I want to like look someone up on Facebook? Sure. To like see where they're at. But for the most part, I don't even notice it, which makes me wonder then like if I got just deleted Twitter and Instagram from my phone, would I even notice? You know, is it just like habitual scrolling? Do I even like care what I'm looking at? Or is it just a, like a habit? Okay, so I get that because, so for forever, if you're a fan of any of our channels, you've probably heard me talk about like Diablo 2 before. Yeah. Um, Diablo 2 was one of those things where I sort of had that relationship with it eventually. Mm -hmm. Like when I first started, it was this game that you and our neighbor friend were playing and it was sort of like, I think I was like, 12 and maybe you had to be 13 to play it or something like that. So yeah. like when you were playing it, you were actively doing something that like I wasn't actually allowed to play yet because I was too young. Yeah. Um, Loser. I know, right? Yeah, I can't believe it. Um, And so I think there was a couple of things in play there. Like I saw the way that you guys were fascinated with the game and I super valued that. Mm. And so it was like, okay, okay. Like this is like, it would be cool. It would make me cool if I was good at this thing that, that uh, my brother, my older brother, and our neighbor friend do. Ah. And so like in my head, all of a sudden it was like, there is nothing that could boost my status in our basement hangouts more than being better at Diablo than these people. <laughs> and so I think that like,
like I got really, really into it. Like a fascination that goes beyond <clears throat> the quality of the game for sure. Right. Like it definitely wasn't that fun, but I had like ranked it in my brain as like, this Super is important. important. Yeah. And I remember that like I played and I played and I played and like there were times like where I would stay home sick from school and it was sort of like, I would have the flu like legitimately, like, you know, I would, I would be, ha I yeah. would have a fever, but like as soon as mom and dad left to go to work, it was like, boom, I have like six hours partially interrupted by bathroom breaks <laughs> to play as much Diablo as I want. And right. so it was, it was an obsession. Um, but then one day I remember we were playing mom was preparing dinner and I was just doing like a Mephisto run doing a little bit of magic finding and I was like why do I care like, like none of this like at this point in time like me and you had gotten older and like my relationship with you was very different we had become like friends and so like and I, and I think I had reached a point where I had realized that like you weren't valuing my coolness based on how many like like yeah rare items you like, had in the game exactly yeah. which which otherwise was the case to me like I was right. like that's that's how I get status like i need high runes <laughs> isn't it interesting how when you're a teenager the different ways you like try and like manifest popularity yes <laughs> yeah yes and and this was one of them um so anyway i remember there was just like one day and i've been playing nonstop, and i was like I don't care anymore. And I literally opened up a free game. Some guy walked in and I dropped all of my stuff, turned off the game, and then that was it. Until college. <laughs> Until, well, and, and so like I have then, and then I think I've played through nostalgia yeah. since then, where it's like, oh my God, I used to love this game. And so I've like downloaded it again and played through it. And, and I've gotten really into it again, but more on my own terms than my expected uh, value to your perception. Right. Um, through playing it. So all that said to going back to sort of this idea of like, you know, Instagram and Twitter and like sort of like when you're scrolling, are you actively enjoying it or does it become this weird like dopamine hit right. where you're like, it's like, oh, there's there's a cool thing. There's a yeah. really pretty picture. There's a like, I like that. that that's, you know, whatever. Um, but how often is it like truly thought provoking to where you're like, like where, to where you set it down and have like a full blown conversation about something? Yeah. Um, or how often are you so invested in someone that you're following to where you're actually watching like the progression of their story. Right, you're like actually checking to see if someone posted something new. Right, right, yeah. right. Which never. Which never, yeah. There's there's yeah. no single person. Like I could, someone could go through and basically unfollow any random one person from my follower list and short of it being like either you or Alice, I would not know that right. it happened. Hmm. Like I wouldn't be like, whatever happened to that feed that I had about leather wallets? That is, yeah, right, exactly. Because one of the 135 accounts that I follow is about about leather works. Yeah, you're that picky, but one of them's about leather wallets. Yeah, yeah. Interestingly, my wife has complained several times the way Twitter has like, um, the way the Twitter algorithm like organizes her feed. Yeah. Whereas to like almost anyone in our office, like you or Scott or Jordan, um, will, anytime they tweet anything, it'll be at the top of their feed, but none of my tweets ever are. No way. <laughs> For some reason, Twitter is like, you don't care about this person. <laughs> So, so like the algorithm has said that she would rather see our tweets than yours. Right. That is so funny. And she's like, it's so annoying. So I always have to like look yours up and everyone else's is just right there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's really weird. I wonder if you're just like losing Twitter street cred for some reason. Oh yeah. Is Twitter out to get me? Maybe. Typical maybe. Big Twitter. <laughs> yeah. That is a, that's a good one. <laughs> it's not really small Twitter though. It's just. <laughs> it's just Twitter. It's just yeah. Twitter. <laughs> Typical Twitter. Right. Right. No. Um. No, that's, that's super fascinating. Um, gosh, I feel like I had a thought about this. Oh, okay. This is one of them. One of the things that Allie gets upset about is when friends of hers will make posts that make their life seem like a lot more put together and polished and perfect oh. than maybe it is in reality. And it's like, well, I know them in real life. Like they're making it look so great, but like in reality. And the, the, the thing that every single person is always aware of is that of course, Instagram is the best version of yourself. You choose what you put on it. Exactly. Like, is going to be the, it's the good picture yeah. of you. You're not going to put up the bad picture of you. Right, right. Or you would never put up a picture of like, here's us mid-fight. Right, <laughs> like, exactly. We were, we were just having a good scream at one uh, another last night. No, what you're describing is classic overcorrection social media behavior. Like, okay, we were just listening. We just went up to your bachelor party last weekend and... Uh, for a portion of it, you wanted to listen to Ender's game? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, and so at the beginning, uh, Ender is having some, like the monitor on the back of his head removed or something, and they tell him it's not going to hurt. Right. Which he says he can count on as an accurate prediction of the future because when adults say it's not going to hurt, it is always going to hurt. Right. Right. This is the exact 
same phenomenon when it comes to, I think specifically, relationships on social media. Yeah. If, if your feed is flooded by a particular couple that is constantly spouting their adoration for each other and just how great everything about their relationship is, there is no truer indicator that that relationship is going down. <laughs> that, that is not a healthy relationship. So so basically, yeah, the, the more that people, so people are way overcorrected. Oh, yes. They, they are basically saying life is so perfect and amazing because it isn't and right they're some, trying to self they're trying to validate their like reason for staying or for not leaving perhaps by sure. putting up these like positive things that's that's my theory on it anyway but without without doubt this is always the case okay so does this get beth though like does she see like happy little couples and she's like either i know the truth or does it like then make her question whether or not you guys are posting happy coupley enough photos oh no 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 she knows the truth oh she knows she, she knows. knows she's not foiled she's not no 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 okay we, we have both observed this enough <laughs> but i think that is the dangerous effect it can have if you're like new to uh, like this this realm of things this realm of social media is to feel like oh my gosh like man these people are like we're, we're not in a good place because look how positive these people are being all the time right like why aren't i like that and it's like no you're probably in a much better spot <laughs> okay so here's the thing though so for for ali i think the frustration she gets is she's like well now the whole world is going to perceive them in a way that is not accurate to what's actually happening and that's always one of those where i'm like or the 13 people who liked the photo right like there's there's a degree in a weirdness where it's like if you're trying to get going on social media and you're like posting videos to mm. youtube and you're getting like it's like you you want nothing more than the world to all of a sudden find your post. It, it, yes. But the, the reality of it is, is that like early on, 16 people are watching your videos because they're probably your parents and grandparents and cousins and siblings and, you know, the friends who you told about the project or whatever. It's, right. it's getting like very minimal traction from the whole world. But because it is posted somewhere where the whole world could see it, I feel like there is this, this, um, like inflated. Right, like sense of the whole world now knows or the whole world now believes that they're this happy couple when I know in reality they aren't. Right. And it's like, no, 13 people, some of whom I'm sure clicked like out of obligation. Oh, that's a question then. Do you ever have obligation likes? No, not never, really. Never, you never like? I No, no. Not at all. Maybe, um, I don't, I don't think obligation likes. No, I don't. I don't have obligation likes. Okay. Okay. No. If I like your photo, I'll do it. I think there would probably be a above 99% rate at which I click like on like yours and Beth's photos. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, that, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I think, I, I think most of the time I just actually like them though. Yeah, sure. That's, that's also true. Right. Um, I don't think the obligation like suggests that the person you're doing it to will notice if you don't. Sure. And that is a kind of control you are letting that person have over you. Right. And this is why you, there's, no, you can't, you can't have that. Right, right. Yeah. And so uh, that, that is, that is part of it. Okay. So then that being said, what, what do you think the world would look like if public facing likes disappeared? Like Ooh. to what extent do you think that seeing how many other people have liked the photo reinforces your interpretation of that photo? Oh, immensely. Immensely. Yeah. You can't even, I mean, this is something that's like on a subconscious level, I think. Right. Like you could, you could tell yourself that you just like the photo, but if, yeah, th that would be very interesting. And I feel like, uh, this is sort of like what would happen if YouTube removed the view counter. Right. You know, would you like, how much of your opinion is based upon the fact that this is obviously popular? Right. Or how much... Like, I remember back in year one of Super Carlin Brothers, I um, made a video called Pay It Forward, and we promoted a, another uh, YouTuber, another small tuber. Yes. Uh, by the name of Panikin, who hasn't uploaded anything tragically in years, sadly. She was, she was fantastic. She was great. She was great. But I remember uh, she, she would leave comments on our, like, year one video. She was an early viewer, and I would, like, I had checked out her channel a few times, and I'd watched, she probably had, like, 10 or 15 videos up, and I'd like like watch through them all because when you have a small right when you start you have such a small number of people you can probably know every single person who's commenting all of them. and you're so curious like i don't know you who are you who are you that's watching and so i'd watch through and i was just like these are like really good but i it was astounding to me that none of them had more than like 15 views like which was like low even for just starting just starting sure like certainly without any promotion at all it, you know if you just shared it to your friends you might have had even 30 views sure that 
have seemed even more normal. I, I couldn't believe it was like 10 to 15 views per video. And it was blowing my mind because I'm like, what's going on here? Like, I'm watching these and they seem really good. No one's seen them. Am I like truly looking at an undiscovered thing? Or is this not good and I am just, and I don't know. Like, like it was like weird that I couldn't like trust myself because the view count was so... Sure, like, sure. unaffirming to me. Right, right. Ultimately, I decided they were really good and we did promote her and yeah, it was, it was great. She got And she got a bunch of subscribers. Uh, we, we, like from our like 250 at the time or yeah, whatever yeah. it was. Um, but yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. I, I went to high school with a kid who, since the day that I met him, wanted to be a commercial airline pilot. Like, I think his, his username literally in sixth grade when I met him was... U.S. Airways 777. Wow. He was the seventh. Ruben the seventh. Ah. Um, but uh, he, to this day, is now a commercial airline pilot. And his Instagram, you know, this is like someone who I've literally known, like, you know, since I was 11. His Instagram is gorgeous. He takes all these amazing pictures, like, you know, of the console of the plane, looking out at like the sunrise over the Atlantic, like, you know, shots that not many people can take. Yeah. Because you have to effectively be a pilot who has been given given proper authorization to, you know, yeah. fly a Boeing jet. Right. I was about to give a model number, but my gut <laughs> my gut didn't have enough. 757? I was going to think 747. 747, that sounds right. I yeah. don't know. Okay, one of those. I think you're right. Um, But, uh, yeah, and he has like 173 followers. And I'm like, what else could he be doing to have a cooler Instagram page? Like, it's, it's a weird thing where I'm like discouraged on his behalf because I'm like, you're posting fantastic content. Content. It's really good. The pictures are very well curated. You have like an aesthetic to your entire page. You do an interesting thing and no Why one is it finding it. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and we so, should put a link to his Instagram page in the show notes. Oh, we could do that. We should we could do that. We should tell everyone to go check it out. And then all of a sudden he'll be like, what is going on? I know. I know. That's so funny. <laughs> That'd oh my be gosh. Great. Oh, so yeah, you should do that and make sure you use the hashtag popcorn culture so we can continue to take down big chicken. Big chicken. It's going down. Yeah. We're coming at you. From Big Waffle. That's <laughs> Big Colonel. Be oh, sorry, Big Colonel. Is big that what we are? No, no. KFC is Big Colonel. I'm getting we're confused. Little oh, we're Little Colonels. We're yeah. Little Colonels. Yeah. We are Popcorn Little Popcorn kernels are better than chicken kernels. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay. can yeah. we get that on a shirt? Popcorn kernels are better than chicken kernels? I don't think it would sell well, but maybe. Well, we well. could see. We could see. What if it came with a free stainless steel, not free stainless steel business card? <laughs> but a stainless steel business That'd card? That would be the package deal. You get your popcorn culture business card <laughs> and your. <laughs> Popcorn kernels are better than chicken kernels. And people be like, what? <laughs> you don't like KFC? <laughs> like, absolutely not. <laughs> Have you seen their use of one specific hashtag? It's an abomination. <laughs> it is. It's like they don't even know about this podcast that didn't exist yet. Exactly. Well, we're exactly. taking it back anyway. Okay, okay. Um, so on that note, I'm going to change the subject entirely. Okay. Okay, so we've, we've talked a little bit about this, and we actually talked about it in the, the last episode of The Pop, but um, we had my bachelor party this past weekend. Okay. Um, where I think, all things considered, we were reasonably tame human beings. Um, but there was a very interesting thing that comes about with it. So bachelor parties are kind of unique because they are like these rare uh, opportunities as you get older as an adult for all of your friends who you've known to sort of like come together and spend a weekend doing a bunch of fun stuff together. Right. Um, and that's that's something I think we even talked about it. Like it's hard to dedicate the time to specifically go and have fun with your friends for no other reason. And I guess weddings end up being a really good excuse for that. Like let's go celebrate, right. you know, this friend this weekend. Um, so you end up being all together. You do a whole bunch of really fun stuff, which means like, you know, you're taking pictures the whole time and stuff. But then what is the etiquette on sharing photos from a bachelor party? Oh, uh, the etiquette is don't even take them. Don't even take them. Don't even take them. Don't even take them. I don't, well, I don't know. Um, I think we had one photo where we made a human period, like a bunch of awesome. Pyramid. Grown, pyramid. What'd I say? Period. Oh, <laughs> no, we made a big ball. <laughs> <laughs> we were a dot. We made, we made a, a human pyramid, like the awesome full grown adults that we are. Yeah. We yeah. We took some great photos of that. That was a funny one. It was. Yeah, but I don't, I don't actually, I don't know. Um, maybe I haven't been to enough bachelor parties. It doesn't, I don't feel like I even remember that many photos being taken. No, I don't either. And and I realized when I got home, um, one of our friends was like sending me photos and I was like, oh my God, like this is such a good one. I want to show everybody. So immediately after we get home from our bachelor party weekend, we were going out to like a fancy dinner 
there with our entire extended family, like, you know, in-laws, all this like crazy stuff, lots yeah. of people. And so the first thing I do is like, oh, let me show you all the pictures from this weekend. And so I was like, you know, I sat down with Allie and I'm, I'm like showing me like mom and dad, like right. all the stuff that we did all weekend. And all I'm like- your good wholesome bachelor party pictures. Exactly. And so I'm like, like I went to go do it and I'm like, wait a second, am I not supposed to do this? Like there's nothing weird at all. Here's here's the thing. The way we're describing should you take pictures, it sounds like the reason is like I don't I don't I don't want anyone to think the reason I would say not to take pictures is because you're doing incriminating things or things you don't want photos or memories of. Jay totally jumped a fence. He jumped right over <laughs> it. No, it's not it's not because of like you're trying to like conceal anything. Sure. I think the reason is because the part of the point of it is to have a collective memory with just the people who you were there with. Sure. That is not shared with other people outside of like the stories you tell. Okay. And okay. so that that is where I'm coming from with that. Okay. I will say I think okay, we didn't touch touch on this other thing in the last pop about the ritual of the bachelor party. Yes. And I think I lost sight of it with yours because because at your bachelor party, everyone already really knew each other really well. True. Like your bachelor party had like me and Tyler and you were half of the people. Right. And then the other people were all just like, we're all really familiar with each other. Right. But right. I have been to other bachelor parties where I felt like the point of it wasn't even to necessarily celebrate the person whose like wedding it was. The real point of it was that all of the groomsmen would need to get know to each know other. each other so that when you get to the wedding, everyone's friends. Yes. And that, that I think is the true, the true power and the true real reason for the bachelor party. It's, it's a major cog in the machine because there's no doubt about it. Like you're talking about like one of the most special days of your life. And if you're surrounded by a bunch of people that you as an individual have like strings attached to and you love them and you have these memories with them, but they don't together, then it's going to be hard for them to have a good time with otherwise who are basically strangers. Yeah, and this is my experience at most adult weddings has been that for the most part, the the party is driven largely by the bridesmaids and the groomsmen. Right. Because the bride and groom are going to be busy. They, yes. They're going to be talking to everyone. They're not going to be like out leading the fun. Right. But everyone else is like the, are like the, the party generals, you know, like they're the people who have been selected to make sure the rest of everyone is fun. They're like the leading the fun. Leading the fun, yeah. You know, yeah. you're elevated by the nature of the party. And that, that this is, that's, I feel like it's sort of a rule or maybe not what I would have known, but that have I've observed having been in the position and having uh, been to a bunch of weddings where I wasn't in the position. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think that there's something to be said for that. And I think that on more than one occasion, I have I have taken over as, uh, as, as Lieutenant Fun at the very <laughs> least. <laughs> Lieutenant Fun checking in. <laughs> Lieutenant Fun, yeah. <laughs> No, there's Is that nothing... gonna go in your person card? My person card. <laughs> <laughs> ben Carlin, Lieutenant Fun. Lieutenant Fun. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it should. Um, no, I, I have always sort of been, uh, I think one of these people that I especially like people. I think I'm sometimes intimidated by people who are, are very open and like exuberant and or, or mm -hmm. whatever. But I love people who think they're stuck inside their shell because I like to take them out. Ah. And it's like, okay, we got this. We got this. This like, is, this is the power of being the groomsman or the bridesmaid though, is that you have like been given a permission slip to come out of the shell. Right. And right. in a way that that like, oh, I'm I'm not act. This isn't even really how I act. This is just because I I've been assigned this for the day. Exactly. Yeah. I, I'm in. Like, if I don't do it, like I'm letting my buddy down. You right. Know? And no, I can't I'm, do that. I can't yeah. do that. It's for the bride. It's for the bride. It's, it's for, for the, the bride. bride. Yeah. yeah. If you're ever in trouble at a wedding, it's for the bride. It's for the bride. It's for the bride. And they'll be like, oh, oh, oh my gosh, I, I did not know. Didn't okay. Realize. Well, Lieutenant Fun, I don't want to bring the fun down but I think we've reached a good stopping point. We've re are we there? I think we're there. So, I mean, I think in general, ah, in general, like <laughs> Lieutenant, ah, they're, they're military words. They are. Um, I think in Just general, like Colonel. The, the goal of the podcast, I think, like, what would you say, like, is the, is the expected length of this podcast in general? Like, Ooh. as, as people listen, I feel like, I think people like longer podcasts opposed to shorter podcasts. I don't feel bad today because we put up three podcasts in one day. We put up three podcasts today. So at this point, we've probably commanded about three hours of time yes yes if not more unless you're like you're the you're like one of you know johnny mcjune 7th over there 
Mm. Was it June seventh? I think I started it was this June seventh. Okay, I started way this to, way to be confident about it. I know. I said I was going to stick to my guns. This is literally I'm doing. I'm like attempting to convince myself that I can do this because I I can't. I can't do it. I can't stick to my guns. I don't trust my gut. Anyway, continue on. I don't even. I thought it was just. I was waiting to see where you were going with that. I think the some podcasts will have a very. They're like a very produced show, and so they will have a very specific length they're aiming for. And I think ours. So far, it seems like it just sort of arrives at a natural... A natural stop. A natural stopping point. Down with big chicken. 